Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the two notebooks that I am using to learn Spanish and I thought it would be helpful to see kind of how I am doing it as an adult, as a complete beginner. I did not study Spanish at all. I actually um, studied French in high school so I am a complete beginner and I wanted to, just like other areas of my life, have a planner or a notebook dedicated to learning Spanish. I'm also using some apps I'm sure you guys have heard of and I will share that with you as well. But as far as paper, this is what I am currently using. So the first thing I will share with you is this little guy right here. And this is a Moleskine Weekly Planner. I do have, I think, one video on my channel about this planner that I will be sure to um, add a card for if you guys are interested. This is the Scarlet Red cover, and it is a hard cover planner, and this is a pocket size, so it is very, very small. So I'm going to give you a flip through and show you how I have been using it. So my purpose with this was to really have all of my weekly learning in one place. And that is just going to be for 2022. So on the monthly in January, I started tracking how many minutes that I was uh, learning through the apps uh, back in 2021, I believe it was in November, I started using Duolingo and then in January I started using the Busu app which I think has um, been much more beneficial to me. I feel like Duolingo is just a lot of vocabulary whereas Busu is so much more than that. So I started using that second app and I was writing down like my minutes for the week, how many lessons, how many words, and um, I plan to continue with it in February and it just didn't happen, but that's okay. So here we are with March and April. Since these are blank, I might just leave them blank or I was thinking about going back and filling them in on the Duolingo app and also the Busu app, they have a lot of cultural information that I think is really important to know when you are learning a second language. So I'm thinking about going back and filling that in just so this can really be like a full, um, I want it to be like full immersion as possible um, with me, you know, learning it by myself without a traditional class setting or without a, a teacher or a tutor. So these are my monthly pages, and then it jumps right in to the weekly pages for 2022, and I'm going to zoom you in just a little bit. So my goal with this weekly planner was, at first I was going to write one line a day, kind of like a one line a day journal, but I wanted it to be all in Spanish. So I did that a little bit here. And so this was the end of December, beginning of January, and like I said, I had just started uh, really studying and learning vocabulary in November. So the one line of day turned out that it wasn't, I feel like it wasn't beneficial. It was fun to do, but I had to look up most of the words. So that's how it started. And then here's just some more, um, like whatever I was learning for that week. So this is just when I was using the Duolingo app and I started writing in the days of the week in Spanish. My goal is to have most of what I write in here in Spanish so I can come back and practice reading it out loud and um, also just to get used to writing. So here is January as well. Started getting into verbs, new words, um, of course, I did decorate it because I love decorating my notebooks and my planners. And you'll see that there, I think it was this week I started writing. I get one word a day sent to me on a notification. I think the app is called, <coughs> excuse me, I think it's called Spanish Dict, like Spanish Dictionary, just shortened to Spanish, Spanish Dict. 
And so I get that notification every single day. So um, it's been really nice just to, you know, have that as part of my daily routine as I get a new word. And I started writing it down. And then here's some uh, Spanish and then English words. This week did not get filled out and that's okay. And now we are into February. So this is when I started, um, the, I believe it was towards the end of January, it was when I downloaded the Busu app. And <clears throat> excuse me, if you guys have used Busu, you know that there's a, a massive difference between the two apps. Um, I did, well, I do have the paid version of Busu, but I got it at a huge discount. So for me, it was definitely worth it. I think it was, when I got it, it was like $3 a month. Um, and I felt like it was something that I could definitely invest in because I want to make this a lifelong um, learning process. So here I wrote down um, I, R, E, R, and A, R verbs. And this little section right here, I actually got online from, I don't know if you guys remember these books. I feel like they were really popular back in the 90s. They're basically... Um, <clears throat> whatever the content is like for dummies so there's history for dummies um, there's Spanish for dummies and then there's also there were these books or flashcards in college called spark notes if you guys remember those and so this right here came from the spark notes Spanish online um, and they have a website if I can find it again I'll definitely link it because it was really helpful um, now, if you are watching this and uh, Spanish is your first or second or third language, um, please ignore the um, any mistakes that you see. Um, so this is, you know, me just trying to learn. I did put these on flashcards because flashcards work good for me um, for memorizing and also just for using. So you can definitely tell a big difference in what I was learning. Um, just focusing on present tense. <laughs> Um, the grammar has been really hard. Um, to be quite honest, when I'm filming this video, I have been studying Spanish for 115 days. Um, like I said, completely by myself. And I really rely on um, the corrections from the community in the Busu app because um, everyone on there has just been really nice. So... Here is March, and this was really fun. Um, we started taking my daughter to the library months and months ago, but what I started doing um, for myself, since we were in the children's department, was checking out um, books that either are bilingual or just um, Spanish children's books. So this was actually a bilingual book, and I think it was called Annie the Apple Farmer. And so here, um, every single day was basically one page in the book. So for this week, I wrote down the entire sentence from that page and the orange I went through and highlighted the words that I knew. And then the blue ones were the words that I either wasn't confident that I knew the definition of, or I just didn't know it at all. So I wrote down, it was um, five pages and then here I wrote down the phrases that I did not know. Um, and since it was a bilingual book, it had both Spanish and English, and then the back it had more Spanish information also. So this was the se second half of the book. And on this week, I decided to split it up, and I wrote the Spanish on the left-hand side, and then the English on the right hand side. And I did watch a YouTube video, I can't remember the guy's name, but he is a Spanish teacher and he said one of the biggest mistakes for English learner or English speakers learning Spanish is when you try to like decode a Spanish sentence word by word. And I wish I had found his video when I first, you know, a couple months ago when I first learning learn started learning Spanish because I thought that's how I could learn it was to write down the Spanish and then decode it word for word. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't work out and that's okay. But, um, so I thought this would be really helpful to have like the Spanish and then the English. And then this is also, um, <clears throat> really easy for, <clears throat> excuse me, gosh, for me to, um, just read these sentences out loud 
and just to practice with my pronunciation. So that is where we are in March. Um, this is, let's see, this is the day that this video will go live. So this page I will fill in with another bilingual book that we got, well, that I got in the children's section. Um, I have been reading these books to my daughter in English and in Spanish. It gives me a chance to try them out. And um, it's called Siesta. So that's what I will be filling in here. So that is my weekly Spanish planner. And now I'm going to talk about this notebook right here. So this is an Archer and Olive B6 notebook. And I think people really use these notebooks, the Archer and Olive ones, for painting because the paper is very thick. I think it's 100 GSM. I could be wrong, but it's very thick paper. So <clears throat> I picked this up on a crazy sale that they had. I think it was maybe $6. It was a huge sale and I had never tried out their notebooks before, so I went ahead and picked this up. So this is what I'm using for um, vocabulary and phrases. I started writing vocabulary in a traveler's notebook insert and that just wasn't working. I wanted it all in one place. So I did go ahead and number all of the pages and um, there's really not, compared to other notebooks like Astology that has 365 pages, this only has 100. So it's definitely less, but the pages are extremely thick. It's almost basically cardstock paper. So um, I have a little uh, index on here um, that I am working on. So I will just flip through it and show you. Um, <clears throat> and I wanted just to have all of my learning in one place. So this will obviously last me longer than a year. So I started, um, like I said, in November. So there's Duolingo. These are just little modules and then I check them off when I'm done. And here is Busu there that I started on January 11th. And I'm just checking them off. And then I did skip a couple of pages and then I started writing down basics and vocabulary. And please, if you guys see any mistakes, um, let me know in the comments um, because <clears throat> everything that you're gonna see, I learned from um, books written for um, like beginner Spanish books or children's books. So some of these could be incorrect. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I am gonna have someone who uh, speaks Spanish as their first language look over this just to make sure that I am learning the correct words and the correct pronunciation. So alphabet, notes, um, days, months, and seasons. <clears throat> and this isn't something that I would like carry around with me when I'm trying to speak Spanish. I just wanna have it in here um, just so I can go through and uh, read it and reference it. So plants, the basics, I've got numbers, colors, um, some school things, body, uh, feelings, emotions and movement, clothing, bathroom, kitchen, dining room, bedroom, living room, transportation, I still need to fill in um, things at the house, family, profess professions, weather, animals, and then the rest is blank. So this is a grid notebook and it has two bookmarks and then it has a nice pocket in the back. I don't really have anything in it, but what I plan to do is just keep going um, and fill this up with everything about grammar because I know that that's the hard part for me is the grammar. Um, the spelling, I feel like I'm getting the hang of, but it's really like conjugating the verbs and just remembering to switch things up if it's masculine or feminine. So, um, that's what I plan to do with that. So yeah, I wanted to share with you guys what I am using to learn Spanish. If you guys have any tips, please leave them for me in the comments down below and I will talk to you guys in my next video.